My favourite mantra is trust in my mahi. I had a bike versus car accident, and one year after the accident, I decided to amputate my leg. Sounds pretty deep, but it's taught me that every day is a gift. It'll be awesome to qualify for the Paralympics. It's a little dream of mine that I've had. Yeah, it gets my heart racing thinking about things like that. My name's Peter Cowan, and I'm a para-athlete in Waka Armour, and I'm from Ngāti Kahununu Iwi and Samoa. So my mum's side of the family, uh, Māori, we've grown up around the Marae and just around tikanga Māori. Was always emerged in kapahaka growing up and having that knowledge and sense of identity has always kept us grounded in our small little community out in Bridge Park. Growing up here in New Zealand, everybody plays rugby at some point in their life and, you know, I wasn't the biggest or the fastest guy on the pitch, but I just knew I enjoyed the challenge that um, sport brings. I was actually finished up playing a game of touch probably an hour before the accident. So I was 15 years old and I was on my way home on my bike. This is where my life changed forever. I was getting ready to turn this intersection and had my arm out I was knocked off my bike and I went over the car. I didn't know what was going on. I thought I was having a bad dream. Then the reality sunk in. And I almost thought I was going to die at one point. The impact was taken through my knee. Yeah, I was very lucky just to get away with uh, a leg injury and nothing else too serious. The recovery process took about a year. The main nerve shooting down my leg had been severely damaged, so I couldn't really extend my knee or flex it back. The leg was withering away, and I was really struggling with what it looked like. It was better off um, getting amputated. My family is the reason for who I am today gotten me through all the difficult times and all the positives. Having my mum around especially, she wouldn't let me feel sorry for myself too long. She would catch me here and there just moping around in the house or just staying in when I could have gone out with my friends and, you know, she saw that wasn't really me, that wasn't my, my style. I was normally a sociable young guy and Having um, people still treat me the same, man, you know, make jokes about me, like, you know, got me laughing again, really helped me push through that and just treat myself normal because I didn't know how to really treat myself at first. I definitely wasn't familiar with much disability, even known people with amputations. I wanted to carry on with life and get moving again and you know, get back to normal, I guess. And my new normal would be different, but I was really keen on seeing what that looked like. Yeah. Finding Waka Armour was a big turnaround for me. Just using the upper body and not really focusing on the legs gave me a bit of a drive just to jump in there and see if I could do it.
It was really man enhancing for me to take something out there and get moving again. And once I got going, I never looked back. Before we were dating, he was doing his sport during his training. Even when we got married, when we had kids, he's always kept sport as a consistent thing that he's done. The kids, I really do think they look up to their dad. He does so many cool things, and like when they see people out on the waka, they're always saying, Daddy's waka. I have two children, two sons. Go to your sink outside. Being a house husband and father pretty much dictates how the day's gonna go. Ready, boys? Cheese. Call it daddy. Cheese. Oh, mate. The daily routine can be pretty hectic at times. Don't you like the taste? It's early morning to the water. Finish training and get back before the kids are getting dressed or having breakfast. Hey, mate. Where are you going? My oldest son's name is Kai and he's three years old. Kai boy, who's your favourite superhero? I like Spider-Man. He's got this thing about him wanting to save the day, I guess. You want to drink milk? And my second boy is Raniere, and he's just turned one. Yeah, yeah Moog! Yeah. Babe, do you want to get him a T-shirt? OK, two dirty T-shirts. They're both cool little boys to be around. Can't wait to see them grow and develop as people. It's my favourite uh, little tool I have. Save me bend it over. Hey, you, come here. Babe, do you know what the time is? It's uh, almost half past. He helps me with my goals and I can help him with his, you know? I think it takes a lot of sacrifice from the both of us. Okay, cry boy, Good man. It was quite different us learning to adjust to the two different roles. Bye, Mum. You know, me being the full-time worker and him being the stay-at-home dad. But I think we've kind of got it down now, you know? Like, he loves being able to drop the kids off and he's always making them, you know, nice packed lunches. And I think it's nice that he gets to spend that time with them. Um, I miss it a bit myself, but, yeah, I do think it's really good. Do you want to go to the park after kindy today? Oh, some pancakes. Oh, some pancakes? Yeah. Are you going to get Dad some pancakes? What about mum? Are you going to get mum some pancakes? <laughs> At times I get quite jealous, but I'm glad that my kids get the best dad. Come on, keep going. Now people know me as a pretty active guy and sports-centred, but before I can do that, I have to be a, a dad, a husband. Morena. Morena, Anita. Have a good day. Ta -ta. The kids are supposed to be dropped off before nine o'clock. So that's probably the busiest time in the morning. And after that, I've pretty much got a bit of recovery time before another session pops up. Oh, you'll be surprised. There's a few dead hours in my day where I can scroll through my phone or even choose to have a nap. But I don't tend to tell my wife that. <laughs> I was just off to the Clyde River this afternoon to go and meet up with my coach. Ah, there we go. Known him for a while now, since being in high school. He's coached a few of the New Zealand teams over the years, so good role model to some of us younger guys out there um, trying to balance life with whānau and, and paddling. He's a hard worker. Yeah, he's got huge potential. He's got a lot of things to work on, family life and all of those kind of things and juggling all of that. Uh, but he does a good job of that, um, considering his situation. You know, when he's here, he's 100% focused on, on the job and um, takes it real serious. For those who don't know, when you're doing any paddling sport, you'd think it's just mainly upper body, 
and core strength, but your legs do play a big part in stability and being stable in the boat. For us amputees or people with disabilities, we find ways around working through that and some methods we use to strap our prosthetic limbs in there or strap yourself into a bit of a custom-made seat. You always got to ensure that you've got a good escape plan. I've had a few tumbles and uh, falls through experimenting, and yeah, I've <coughs> almost had a, a kayak sink to the bottom of the river from not getting out quick enough. So, me and my coach are always looking for um, safer ways to keep me safe and also save us some money on losing equipment. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty terrifying. I was kind of like, oh man, I don't want to lose this equipment, but also got to, you know not lose my own life at the same time. It's good to have my coach uh, with me out on the river at times like that. So I don't really uh, risk going out there by myself too much. He has capsized in the K1. There's a bit of a worry, but he's um, well versed from having a few flips in the river here, like most paddlers. So that first one might have taxed you a bit more than we thought. Yeah. A bit more recovery. So going up to the limb centre, our whole aim is to make the small adjustments and improvements on our paddling prosthetic that we need in terms of um, getting effective leg drive and hopefully come up with a more safer solution for, a, for an escape if I capsize. All right, so I guess the main thing we want to know today is what has worked and what hasn't worked with the prosthesis. Technique-wise, it's been able to pull myself into my stroke and get a bit of drive out of it. Yeah, you'll see some of the contact points on the boat as well, where it's been hitting right, up okay. the front of the hull. And I would like to get up more easier, to be honest. Um, it was hard to escape well, without worrying about the kayak filling up before day. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably it. But, uh, I guess by the time you're upside down, you're like, oh, I've got to get out in the hurry, then it's... Yeah, uh, oh, it's the panic mode. So can you go through what a paddle stroke looks like? So it's not like a big leg drive like the kayak, but it's just a slight... There, yeah. So as you're paddling, mm. you're actually hitting that, right? Yeah. What did I try and... Being in the walker by myself, I do have moments where I kind of remind myself that, yeah, I'm not in it alone. Um, I've got a great team behind me. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another check socket, mm. which will have the door that opens at the front. And so if you have a... When upside down, you just hit that button to, to get out. And then we're going to try and get the knee a little bit further up so it doesn't hit the boat. Not much people get to do what I'm doing and have this opportunity, so I don't take it for granted. So um, you made it into finals in Canada, eh? Yeah. That's pretty cool. It was, it was mean as. Like, honestly, that helped heaps. Like, oh, I think the leg would be a small part of it. Yeah. They'll be awesome to qualify for the Paralympics. And I've seen the standard of, um, you know, work ethic it takes. When I do get to put on that black jersey or that silver fern, I think about all the people who I represent and who have helped me get here. Three, four, five, six, good. All right, same again on the other side. Paralympics, it's always been a goal of his. The closer and closer we get to it, I feel he's starting to get really excited. He's always telling me, I've got a good feeling about this. Just trust me. When we make life decisions or changes, I'm like, I don't know how this is going to work. But he's like, trust me, I've got a good feeling. And every single time, it's worked out. Here we go. Last set. It's locking. I think it means a lot because he's trusting his gut. Three. Four. Now, thinking about going to the Paralympics is big enough for me. But to make a finish on the podium scares me at times, but gives me strength to Aim high. Hey guys, should we go make a slide? Come on, you like making slides? Me and my coach do a lot of planning. <gasps> hey, playing with the waka, hey. We factor in what I have to do at home first in order to be the best I can on the water. You got your ball? <laughs> the highlight so far would be, you know, I could say, making it to the world stage and um, getting certain placings and that, but 
Um, just on my recent campaign, my oldest son was old enough to realise and understand where I was and what I was doing. In lane three, the 27-year-old semi-finalist of the 2019 World Championships from New Zealand, Peter Cohen. He got to watch one of my races and it's a bit of a good moment for me. He was like, go dad, <laughs> super fast. And we have a start in this second semi-final. Strong start here from lane three is New Zealand, Peter Cohen. As you can see some paddling and shifting to keep the boats as we're going here from the New Zealand paddler. It looks like the top three is going to Uzbekistan, Spain, and New Zealand as we are heading to the finish line. So close, but it does look like New Zealand may have managed to just edge this out. This co-puppet, it's bigger than me. It's for my family, my friends, and it's my sort of give back to those who have helped me in my recovery. You want one? <laughs> hey. Once the kids finish kindy, then it's two hours before mum gets home. <sighs> there you go. So I've got to really have your things in order. Maybe have dinner cooked. Oh, who's that? It really can be taxing on relationships with my wife and my kids, so I try and be mindful of how much time I am away. Oh. Do I go back? <laughs> Laters. A lot of people that have family in sport, you know, there's a lot of sacrifices you make, a lot of time that they take away from the family, and so sometimes when things get hard, you know, he's like, I can always just stop what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, you know, when we sit down and look at it, we know that long term this is the best decision for us and for our family. And it all goes back to, you know, thinking about our kids and knowing that, like, they're going to have someone in their life who's, you know, never given up and who's done everything that they can to achieve their goals. He wants them to know that when they grow up, they can chase their dreams as their dad did. Yeah, it helps heaps. Got to adapt with the kids. Because at this level, you, you have to be training every day and have to be keeping, you know, that commitment up. Because I get kind of guilty when I can't make it to the water some days, but this is a bit of a lifesaver. Minimum 90 minutes on the river or in here. Nice and steady. Get the breathing under control would be like my biggest focus, eh? Surprised I'm actually talking to you right now. <laughs> My favourite mantra is trust in my mahi. I have that in my mind every day when I wake up and it gives me that extra kind of boost to make it count, you know. Not only just turn up down into the river or turn up at the gym and just be there, but to actually put some real intent on it. There's no other worse feeling than getting there and knowing you haven't done everything you can. What I've come to learn about the fear and the scary parts of performing, it's just welcoming it. To be submissive to the pain that comes in training or just welcoming the challenge. Going to the dark places sometimes and going into deep water helps me come out as a better person. It's all up to him how, uh, and how things go over the next year. Yeah, he's got huge potential. It is a pretty lonely version of Wakama, the singles. We don't want to make life hard for him either. He's got to keep enjoying it. That's what Wakama is all about. So we try and get him out in the team boat now and again. In the islands, they have a saying that Wakama isn't a sport, it's a lifestyle. My dad's Samoan. Being Māori and uh, Samoan, it's a good link into my whakapapa. And so I find a bigger connection to the, the sport in that sense as well. I've got some pretty cool uncles. You know, they're just good examples for me growing up. 
I haven't always aimed to be an athlete or someone famous like that. Just wanted to be like you know, good, humble, hardworking men that I've kind of grown up around. When we're setting goals with my team, we all come up with our own philosophies. I picked the Whakatauki, um, Whaiate Iti Kahurangi, Ki Te Tuohu Kwe, Mehe Maunga Teite, which in essence for me means to, to strive for something great and keep trying to do my best despite the challenges that come daily. Every day is not as perfect as I'd like it to be, but it's a, it's a gift, it's a new, new opportunity to, to be my best. I feel like he's flourishing because of what he's gone through. I don't think he's scarred. Every single time someone mentions it or someone will say, I'm truly sorry, you know, he kind of like looks and he says, I don't know what you're apologising for. I don't know if I'd say it's the best thing that happened, you know, he's got us and me and the kids, but it's definitely given him a lot of blessings in return. <laughs> pretty happy with how things have turned out, to be honest. And I don't think I'll be the person I am today without the experiences I've had. My leg? Yeah. Did you say it was a robot one? Yeah, robot It's kind of given me my, my own unique, I guess, identity, but my sense of being and belonging. Do you want to be a robot like me? Nah. <laughs>